let's shift our attention away from the uh, uh, technicals more towards the fundamentals and what's going on in currencies and treasuries. We've got just the person to help us with that this morning. Phil Strievel joining us, Chief Market Strategist at Blue Line Futures. Phil, good to have you here. Happy New Year to you. Let's begin with the greenback. Is this what a repricing cut expectations looks like? Yeah, it sure looks like it. I'm in the dollar next at five week highs right now. We broke through the 50 day moving average yesterday. I believe if we get that extension upwards over like 103.30, it's going to grab those bullish trends. We were bearish trend for most of November and December, and then that consolidation sideways in our early January, the breakout higher. I think that it's making people really question about what the Fed's intentions are. We've seen several Fed speakers come out. We've got Fed President Williams coming out later on today. We've got Atlanta Fed President Bostic coming out tomorrow. You know, we've seen that they've really been standing pat on any kind of talk about cutting rates. And I think it's really pushing those expectations out. You go just one week ago today, it was an 80% chance that they were gonna cut rates in March. And then just yesterday, 69%. Today, only a 60% chance. I think that those rate cut expectations are fading fast, and it's weighing in on a lot of different commodity markets out there. Phil, am I right to look to some of the other foreign currencies? Uh, before I brought you in, I pointed to the yen, weakness we've seen in the euro currency as well, fueling the dollar higher. Yeah, what a disappointment in the yen. It just really can't gather any steam, and it seems like when they're going to finally start tightening, when they're going to reverse policy stance, you know, that's when they pull the rug right back out on it. You go to the euro currency, the British pound, they've also come out and said that, hey, higher for longer, we're kind of pushing out those interest rate cuts, even though their particular economic situations are a little bit more dire than the U.S. I think the U.S., though, a lot of this economic data is a bit one off where you get, you know, these beats and things like that. We Like we should see retail sales come out. It's going to be a little bit firmer if you look at seasonally how the weather was coming into late November, December. It was great. Try and get those people out there buying things now at the stores. Man, yeah. it is chilly out there, <laughs> even 23 degrees in Florida right now. So, you know, I think it's a lot of seasonalities here. But these Fed officials, they don't want to backtrack on what they've done. They've worked so hard to get these interest rates up here. They're seeing a light at the end of the tunnel. Things like crude oil and other inputs into you know inflation data are really starting to come down despite all the geopolitical headwinds uh, that are out there so they're doing a really good job i gotta give them that i want to take a look at a couple charts here phil you mentioned the 50-day moving average i queued it up so we could have a look the dollar the green back to 103 and right back to this 200 as well so you can see the middle of the range i pointed to and i always feel like if you get through the middle of a range you've been in with energy after rejecting a lower level as we just did uh, back in uh, the end of last month here, then you open up a door for a retest of the upper extreme. Just quickly want to point to the weakness. I looked at the yen and some of the selling we've seen since the end of last year, beginning of this year. This is just this small blip on the radar. Look at this compared to the bigger picture move lower. This goes back to the beginning of 2023. Actually, let's take a look because pull up the weekly. I mean, it even really speaks more to that point that the yen continues to struggle and Phil, as I look at the data overnight, I mean, can you, I'm not sure if you had a chance, I hope I'm not backing you in a corner here, but speak to what we saw in terms of uh, CPI out of the UK, for example, coming in at 5.1%, a little higher than expected. That seems to be kind of giving the pound a little bit of strength today and maybe kind of countering that uh, effect we're seeing from weakness in the yen and the euro, for example. That's the only currency that's green on the screen, you know, besides the US dollar at the moment. So that really delays those interest rate cut expectations. The UK higher than expected be, CPI. Yeah, the, yeah, it's gonna be higher for longer over there. And, you know, I'm really surprised that, you know, these data, and so we've seen, you know, just in the US higher CPI one day, lower PPI, you know, the next day, is that any kind of trend reversal change like that? So I think that, you know, you know, you look at the way this inflation data is holding on, I think it's just gonna take time. It's just such a lagger before mm -hmm. it comes in and we start to hit these lower boundaries. I don't think we're going to get close to this 2%. We're going to we're, we'll get there, but I think that the reality is is you got to look at input costs are going to just remain high. People are going to be stubborn to take down any of those prices. They don't want to go back to where their trends are. You go to the restaurants, they're not cutting prices and things like that. You know, so so it's just going to be this higher for longer. We just have to deal with it. Yeah, it does seem like a sense of reality. In terms of input prices, a bumpy road, it takes time, right? All of that kind of combined here. And uh, somewhat of a mixed picture in some ways, right? And there may not be a lot of clarity at this point in terms of 
the path forward one way or the other. We were just talking about the CPI data out of the UK, but as I look at the Euro numbers, uh, the Eurozone, core CPI 3.4% in line with expectations, but a slight decline from prior levels year over year at 3.6. The core coming in at 0.5, okay, a little bit higher than expected, I guess, these numbers, as I look at the month over month numbers, a little bit higher than expected here as well. So uh, um, again, kind of a mixed bag here though, a little closer to home here though, Phil, as I look uh, ahead to some of the numbers head our way in about uh, seven minutes, we've got retail sales and port export prices. The, the retail sales is kind of one of the biggest report we've been waiting for all week besides okay. some of these Fed speakers. But when you look at it, the, the, the secret to looking at a Fed speaker is look at what their previous comments were from the last time they spoke. And that'll get you a gauge whether or not they're you know, more hawkish, more yeah. dovish on the fence and things like that. You could risk manage your day around that. This retail sales number, we do think because it's seasonally, it might come in at that upper end of the boundary. You might get a capitulation on some of these other markets like gold, silver, you know, copper has been under pressure, oil prices. We've been trading some of those farther out contracts and they are dipping below 70 where we do see some value. One thing that I do want to note is that gold has been doing an excellent job holding over the 2000 level. And I think gold really has its hopes on that it gets this first interest rate cut in March. And if you look historically since 1990, that gold futures on average have rallied 6% in the first 30 days after that first interest rate cut. I read that on a report yesterday. It was really good stuff. And I think that it gives you some kind of, you know, preparing to position for when that interest rate cut happens. So if you start to see, you know, backtracking on these Fed speakers, some of this economic data be a mess. And I think you really take a cautious tail when you come to these uh, employment data. We've really seen the private sector slipping on adding jobs. And I think the government is trying to do anything they can to continue to retain power in the uh, cur of the current administration by kind of inflating those numbers there to show a healthier economy than what it is. You know, we're going to take a little closer look at the commodities in just a minute here. But to your point, I'm looking crude oil right now down about two and a half percent. And We've been talking about gold, a win for the bulls for a while now, considering some of the headwinds, the fundamentals, the dollar at these current levels, right? Holding above the 50, holding above the 200 after just recently posting new all-time highs. I mean, yeah, follow-through mm -hmm. is a little bit of a disappointment, but the fact that they were able to achieve that level and a retracement's been somewhat limited compared to uh, that longer-term trend environment, which still remains to the upside here. Phil, talk to me a little bit about, you mentioned the Fed's message, right, comparing uh, mm -hmm. current comments relative to prior to see if we get any a tone shift. Um, uh, where are you seeing that? Who have you seen a tone shift? Uh, where should our focus be today? Because we've got a handful of names uh, uh, on the schedule as well. Fed President Williams, he delivers in a New York event here today. He said that he expects to maintain that restrictive uh, accommodative stance for some time until they fully achieve their goals and that it's not appropriate to dial back policy until you see inflation come back down to that 2% level. So he's quite hawkish. He probably can continue to reiterate that. And then tomorrow, right when you wake up 6.30 in the morning, you'll be doing your show right then. And you're going to have Fred Pre Fed President Bostic come out. He's going to speak. So you're going to have to grab that one as well. You're all over that one. I'm just focusing on what happens today. You know, I like that uh, because as I'm reminded, I feel like it was Williams, Fed Williams, that initially provided that pushback after uh, Powell's FOMC meeting, the comments suggesting that we could see uh, rate cuts to come. Six versus three, though, Phil, still a major issue here. There's a little bit of discrepancy in terms of what the market's pricing in and what Fed officials are telling us. Man, if we can get 150 basis point rate cut over the course of this year, that would be amazing. But it would be such a tailwind for these markets that they would end up bringing inflation back. And I think that that's what mm. they're worried about. We're already seeing this kind of higher for longer. It is weighing in on the small caps, Russell 2000 breaking down a bit here. So we'll see, the, when it comes to oil, oil is one of the, the best gauges of inflation. I think that's the one that's kind of most sensitive that people watch and they feel right away in their pockets. The deal with oil right now is that a lot of those shipments that have been going through the Red Sea are being redirected right now. So we're not really seeing um, any kind of impact as far as supply coming off, more delays at the moment, and that's why your oil prices are drifting a bit lower. Now, I do believe, again, on, on oil, I think there's an OPEC put in place um, because of the fact that, you know, they're going to be concerned that they need to get prices upwards to balance their budgets. They were under, under some pressure last year. These are OPEC countries, and you look at U.S. production growth, 
it is slowing. If we do get this shallow recession, you could see demand surprise to the upside. And then again, the U.S., their production growth on oil is slowing as well. So uh, average range on oil, about two bucks, and that's where we're down here from high to low on the day. So something to keep an eye on. One could argue crude oil coming off the highs we saw into the end of last year, up around 95, has helped rates come off as well, and the Fed's decision-making process here. Phil, appreciate you joining us. A solid breakdown here, talking currencies, treasuries, and a couple thoughts there on commodities. Phil Strebel, Chief Market Strategist, Blue Line Futures. Coming up, we're talking with Bob Iacchino. We've got Chief Strategist of Path Trading Partners.